I want me and you to be in a project. We need to do something. We need to do something. Oh, me and you We've been trying to get some to... We had a, we had a sci-fi. Yeah, up. we had a little something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need to get we started. Li we literally need to do hey, something. Me, you, and Daniel Kaluuya. I done said it. That's it. It's going to be... That's think, another box office smash. Yeah, I think we should do something. And I think we should collaborate. It's going to happen. I'm looking forward to, to that. I'm actually... That's, I've been thinking about that a lot more yeah. frequently as well. Yeah. Like collaborating with people who I came up with. Yeah. And also at the same time collaborating with people who have the talent to, yeah. to get it done. I'm down. First of all, welcome. Welcome. And we're not going to do this how everybody else does it. Because we have history. Yeah, we do. So I think we should start from the beginning. Let's do and it. And talk about how we know each other. So mm -hmm. that, you know, as the conversation goes along, everyone has the context. Yeah. If we're a bit silly, you know, because yeah. we've been friends for a bit. Went to drama school with each other. Yeah. I've seen you from when you were training, when you first came into identity drama school. Yeah. And then now we're here. By the way, congratulations on Kanda Forever. Thank you. Big success. So I guess I'll start off by letting you just, you know, talk about how we know each other. I mean, I know, but I want to hear your voice. Oh, man. <laughs> um, how we met. I remember just going to acting classes, wanting to improve and just always seeing you in the corridors, just headed into class and just wondering about, you know, the ways in which you did your process. I just was such a huge fan of, of you. And I just remember, like, us as a group always going to McDonald's at the end of the training sessions and just talking and inspiring each other. Yeah. And I just remember there was a moment where someone said something like, yo, Johnny, trying to do something like, I don't know, something like the bill or something. Not, not that anything's wrong with that. Yeah, that is wrong with the bill, but, but I kind of figure out what my answer was. But like a TV show, just like, they were just like, yo, what's, what's your next <laughs> TV show? And the first thing you said was just like, I want to do a feature film. Like I want to do a big feature film and, and at that time Attack the Block was about to come out mm -hmm. and you were thinking ahead and we would have never guessed that you were thinking into the realms of Star Wars. So when that happened, yeah, it's crazy. That was such a big inspiration. But I, I liked that environment. I liked I liked being there. And we had a good couple of people that had passed yeah. through identity drama school and a good couple of people that have, you know, been successful from that experience. Yeah. So I guess rubbing shoulders with you lot and then seeing you lot around and then yeah. As you said, after class, going to McDonald's and just chilling and speaking about what we are living today. Yeah. It's a phenomenal thing. Yeah. But obviously, with Wakanda Forever, yeah. which is obviously the latest project to come out. First of all, how do you feel? Yeah, it's been like a week. Um, still processing, really. Really thankful for the other, like the build up to this moment. Yeah. Being in the first movie, doing the Avengers films, it's kind of trained me to just think about it in terms of the craft. Mm and not to overthink it a little bit. Yeah. So this, this moment, it feels amazing. There's groundbreaking things that's happening, record-breaking things that's happening. Mm. But at the same time, I'm just like, my main focus is, has it affected people? Has it left an impact? Um, did I do the best I could and did I tell the truth? And I just leave it at, at that. Yeah. And then the numbers and the things that's happening. I, just, oh. I know, that's some big numbers. Mm, big numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, some big numbers. Yeah. And you know, um, we came from theatre. Yeah, we do. They don't want to tell you the box office in theatre. You yeah. probably quit. <laughs> yeah, theatre is like, you know, <clears throat> that's that's like hardcore stuff. Stand down. That is an order. Mother, I'm with Aneka. We can provide air support. Aneka, do not let her leave the Mother, land. Mother, you're, you're, you're breaking up. We can't hear you. Jordan. Love you. Bye. I think that's what's so, so special is that, obviously, starring in The Woman King and you being in one kind of forever, I'm seeing her reoccurring theme of empowerment for women. Yeah. I guess for you being at the forefront of that, you know, between the first Black Panther and now, yeah. you know, I was discussing with my sister when I went to go see it. I was like, her role has pushed her into a position now where it's a lot of weight on Shuri's shoulders. Yeah. Because a lot of us walked into the movie not knowing what they were going to do, you know, yeah. after, you know, what, what happened and how they were going to reconnect them after Chadwick's yeah. passing. Yeah. So to see that you were obviously catapulted to a position that obviously reflects empowering women, but at the same time, it's pressure. How did you deal with that through the filming process? Because I know that could have been complicated. That wasn't super easy. Um, but the first film, because of the love and the appreciation we got from the audiences, seeing the ways in which T'Challa was surrounded by women who were just phenomenal. 
mm. you know, his little sister was creating his technology. Queen Mother giving him counsel advice. His main love is one of the greatest spies Spy, of our yeah. nation. His general is the best warrior of our nation. Mm. So that was like the, the, the stepping off point mm. um, of inspiration for this film. It was just an, an, an opportunity to express the love that I have for Chad. Mm. And it was an opportunity to, to do what I always wanted to do, which is inspire, especially for us as black women. You know, I wanted us to, to see ourselves in ways that are different, that's mm. empowering, that's um, impactful. Mm. When that opportunity came for this, it was bittersweet because, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm missing my brother and I want him to be here. Mm. But at the same time, I have to honor him with my role. I have to honor him with my, with my character and my talent. And mm. I have to do something that can make so many women around the world proud. He's gone, but, but I'm moving forward. T'Challa is dead, but that doesn't mean he's gone. Chad would go anywhere. Everybody knows his nature, know the kind of guy he is, especially yeah. if you've got the, the grace to meet him. Mm -hmm. How is it now going through that process? And obviously, you know, during press, you guys have been asked this. So I don't want it to be like a press take. Like, no, it's no, real no. life. Yeah, yeah. Like, how is that process now after that? Yeah, um, super hard. Still, still quite unbelievable, if I'm super honest with you. Like, yeah, it's just unbelievable that someone so talented and impactful for not only our generation, but especially for, for young black men as well. His beautiful portrayals, he used to make fun of him on set, be like, which biopic are you doing next? Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah. Because he's always, he's James always Brown. playing someone of significance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's still a hard pill to swallow because the day it happened, it, it, I can remember it like it was just because it was just yesterday. Mm. And if I could just go back and just rewind that day and just erase it and it never happening and just, being on set with with my brother, I would I would give anything in the world just to have that. Huh? <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Every time I see the Black Panther cast, man, yeah, it makes you feel like, damn, I want to be in that it's, film, it's, man. It really is you a lot family. Have this. <laughs> I think I, I came to the Black Panther UK premiere, and yeah. they and they and they had me take a picture of Lupita and Michael and you guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that, was that my picture. Closest, that was the closest I felt to it. I go, God, this feels good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knew that it would it would be a, a, a genuine moment for for all of you. Yeah. But I commend you in in moving forward in this art and working as a team to, to make sure that Chadwick's legacy is respected because that for me, you know, that's, we're all coming up seeing that the way you lot handled it. Yeah. Was, was, was powerful and reflective yeah. of that powerful man that Chadwick was, man. Yeah. What a king, man. We absolutely love him and, and it's only right for us as a team to take something that he put his heart and his soul mm. and his mind into, you know. He thought about all the characters in intricate ways. He wasn't a selfish creator or artist. He thought about the ways in which Shuri could be developed or mm. Nakia or, or the, the introduction of Namor. He knew all of these intricate things and he was so excited for all of it. Mm. And he supported and championed everybody's, everybody's part. I am not king of all people. I am king of Wakanda. And it is my responsibility to make sure our people are safe. I'm a Marvel fan, so I'm gonna stay for the post credit. You know how that goes. <laughs> it's an important scene. That kind of gives us um, a clue as into where the Marvel Cinematic Universe is heading. And obviously a big deal for you in terms of where your path as an actress. That post credit scene for me is another extension of the ways in which we wanted to honor Chadwick, mm. especially the role of T'Challa. Mm. And in the movie that Chadwick was written into before he passed, there is a journey of, of a father and son relationship. Okay. When reading this, I, I could sense that um, we had to find a way to just continue the legacy of T'Challa, mm. of, of what T'Challa means to the world, especially to young black men, mm. but to also allow for this feeling of, of forward movement and, mm. and like a rebirth, a renewal. And that scene messed me up. I remember when we yeah. auditioned Beautiful Divine. How many kids did you audition? Just two. Just two, okay. They were both brilliant. Mm. 
and um, Divine came in. And That's his name, Divine? His name is Divine. Wow. He had a little little mohawk. <laughs> little Chadwick Mohawk. I was like, oh, yeah, your yeah, mama yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you do. No, he started to look doing. like Chad as well. I can't lie, yeah. There was a sensitivity about him. And there was just this feeling in the room that this was the kid. This was him. And I remember he, I, I hugged him. I told him I loved him. And he did a good job. He, little tears was running down his eyes. And mm. he left. And I was just, I was just like, me and Lupita kept looking at each other like, this is the kid. And I looked at Nate and Ryan. Mm. I said, this, this, this is him. And, mm. and, um, that scene is um, is beautiful because it, it represents what the future will be. It represents, you know, the ways in which we can um, continue the role of, of T'Challa um, mm -hmm. for future generations. How do you maintain the balance between something that is politically effective, that is meant to empower, yeah. and character, and mm -hmm. art? Because, you know, I don't know about you, but in drama school, going to identity every week, Yeah. The politics of film and the world wasn't involved in our art. No, it was um, just pure it art. It was just pure art. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to think of things on set that might affect people or, or whatever. Yeah. How do you maintain that balance being in something so so huge, so culturally huge and mm -hmm. important to a lot of people? You zone <laughs> out. Yeah. For me, I zone out and I go back to the basics of why am I doing this? And if the basics of it is to do a story that's meaningful, you right. know, I want you to have a good time when you go see it. You know, why am I investing 10,000 hours into my craft if it's not gonna make you feel something? So I try to drown out the, the pressures as it, as it may be. How do you drown out? Like, what, what is it through, practically that you through, do? Through prayer, music. Going out with Daniel. Going out with Daniel. And not inviting me. Seeing you. And not inviting me. I see you all the time. Well, I do see you, but yeah. It's, it'll be good to walk in, you know, at the same time. You know, I know. Get the, get the location. <laughs> But every, that's what's so cool now, I think. Do you feel like you look at yourself and you're a, a, different, a different version of where we started? Do you feel like a different person? I feel or like... Or do you feel like you're still in a, in a process? Is there a crescendo to this? There's, oh, man, that's a good question. Um, there is a process. Um, there is a growth. Yeah. But I feel like we're growing into who we always were meant to be. And that's I feel right. like our peer groups are so tight. Yeah. And, and we, can, we, we can access each other very quickly. We can pull each other up very quickly. Yeah, and get yeah. into a little bit of a pickle. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll send that text. Hey, yeah. come back into the into the fold. Get yeah, right. Yeah. We have that because it started off with, with just love. Talk to me about breaking. I watched it. Yeah. On the plane. You watched it on the plane. I watched it on the plane. Nah, I'm in a cute um, <laughs> I know. I wanted to watch it on the big screen, but you know, tour life is. I'm more like it's intense. So I'm like, I hope that, I hope it wasn't too bad. Oh man, intense. phenomenal performance. Mm. I am always impressed and always inspired by you. Yes, ma'am. This is the Wells Fargo. Uh, yeah, I need to talk to Bridget about my 401k. I think she made a $9,000 mistake. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Can I take a message for you? What inspired you to want to tell that story? I mean, we discussed this like, it's hard to be an actor in which basically your job is to pretend that you're somebody else. Yeah. And do roles that motivate purpose. Yeah. Um, how, do, how does my acting align with the things that I care about yeah. um, and how and what are the important moments in which I can decide on film projects that merge those moments. Yeah. Um, and I found it in Breaking. Kwame Kweyama, actually, yeah. who I um, worked for my first job at Tricycle Theatre, my first job that I'd done... With Amel Amin. Amel Amin. Wow. So after Identity and after, you know, I graduated, whatever, my first job was at Tricycle Theatre. Wow. Kwame Kweyama was directing one of the three plays I was in called mm. Seize the Day. In that play, I had one line. Mm. I was just there to tell the mayor to come to the stage and then go off. And so Kwame would always say that, nah, we'll, go, we'll work together in the future. Mm. And then the time came and then Kwame has this script breaking that he's co-written with Abby Corbett, our director. Yeah. And it was just phenomenal. When I read it, emotionally, I was, I was pulled towards this character. Yeah. But then I saw that moment. I was like, wow, this is a great moment where I can commit to a role. Mm -hmm. I can do something that actually requires me to tap into versatility. Yeah. I have to change the way I speak, the way I look. They gonna come in that door and crack my head open. Now, ain't nobody coming in there and cracking open your skull, man. Not, not, no, 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 sir. Not on my word. Nigga, please, you don't control these people, man. You ain't got no power. What was the process of, there's so many like psychological intricacies of that character. Like even the way like you moved your hands, the way yeah. you spoke, the way you cut, like just your body language. It's almost like a chameleon, really, like just mm. morphing into this character. Mm. And I just wanted to know like some of that processing, like how did you, how did you find that? 
Did you study him? Did you yeah, watch I mean, videos? By the way, we had a two-week turnaround mm. from when we confirmed on the roll and all the paperwork was done to when we were shooting. Mm. It was hitting the ground running. So I used the... Obviously, Abby had collected a, a lot of research papers and documentation, some of which was, you know, was, was hard to look at, but we had to delve d deep into who this guy was with yeah. this short amount of time that we had. And you know that indie budget, you know, we ain't got that Wakanda forever. <laughs> you know, I know that. Listen, I do you a lot, lot catering, of indie. That I, catering budget. I got a lot of indies I know, on my... I know, but that... Whew. I love my indies. I know, no, me too, me too. But you, you can tell the difference, you know, it can be a, a harder process. And so I just read a lot about Brian. There was a lot of CCTV footage okay. of the unfortunate day. I had to shave my hair myself. And you know, wow. it's hard for a boy from South London, from Peckham, you know, when you got the lineup and they tell you to shave it off. <laughs> so for the character, they felt like a sacrifice, you know. Yeah. And then it was about the stuff that we knew about. Remember the greeter class? Yeah. Where it was about movement. Yeah. Like, for example, in A Woman King, you know, we would be regal and then the yeah. greeter would say, okay, be another character. Okay, I'm Brian. I'm much more, yeah. you know, introverted and, and yeah. fearful. Yeah. So I kind of tapped into the stuff that we learned, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up. And it was just, I, I just had an amazing time. Felt like yeah. theatre on film. I love that. From that to playing a king yeah, in Woman King, like when you read that script for the first time, like how did you feel? First of all, I felt, I felt like this is the closest I'm going to get to being in Black Panther. <laughs> you know there's a connection between both of our projects, right? So the Domelage was inspired by the Agogie. Yes. Um, so there was that connection. I was just like, I'm closer. I'm yeah. closer to Wakanda. <laughs> um, Gina Prince, by the word, our director, who kind of wrote me this letter and it felt like a call to action. It didn't feel like she was just offering a role. She was kind of like, I know about you as an individual, separate to, to, to industry. Um, yeah. We have mutuals, and this is a phenomenal role that you can step into. But also, I knew that I would be wearing robes. Yeah. You know I'm Nigerian. <laughs> I must wear robes that are magnificent and colourful. So I, I love like, it. It's a fun element to it. It was a beautiful character, filled with so much rich history. Yeah. And I felt... Like I was at the London premiere and the room. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You did pass through. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The that room was, was yeah. electrifying. Yeah, and it was crazy. For us to see ourselves in that way, you know, from going to drama school, from working with Greta, mm. from auditioning to doing these amazing franchises and to then being able to step into this arena of mm. black characters yeah. that are at the forefront, mm. some of the most amazing stories in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And to hit box office. It's, a, it's, it's the dream. It's mm. the dream. Um, and I always say this, whenever we link up, whether it's me, you, or whether Daniel Kaluuya, yeah. or there's a unity and a way in which we help each other as actors as well. Yeah. That I think a lot of people don't know about. And even um, when we had our last conversation, I, I think we were on the phone for like four hours yeah, when I was yeah, in New yeah. York. And I don't know whether you had been filming or kind of forever. You yeah, were, I was. You were, yeah, yeah. you were filming it. How now do you utilize that to make sure that other people coming in are empowered the way you have been empowered, the way you have been, been yeah. supported? How do you use your, yeah. your platform and op opportunity to do that? It's about community and it's about sharing information mm. and not withholding in ways that you could empower someone. Mm -hmm. It's just as simple as just having a good heart. Yeah. Someone needs advice, someone needs anything and because you know, I'm around people such as yourself who if I pick up the phone and I ask you for an advice, you would give it to me. Absolutely. And I think we just have to be that for one another continuously mm. because this is a this is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. So I just try to do unto others as I would want it to be done unto me. Like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. love on people, just give advice. I want to ask you about other things that you're doing because I know you have your own production company. Yeah. I know also The Silent Twins is one of the first projects to come from the production company. Yeah. So tell me about that, the production company, the, the, yeah. the vibes separate to on-screen work. Yeah, I love the fact that you're asking me these questions. Yeah, man. You don't understand. You know, I was going to ask you on the phone, though. Yeah. So I was just like, they set this up well, so yeah. I can just ask you in front of everybody. But I love that you're asking me because there's, there's so many conversations that I've had with you mm. that sparked my courage mm. to go and do things. Mm. And producing is one of them. Yeah. I remember you were doing Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. And that was just after you got into the world of Star Wars. And yeah. I saw the way you navigated. Yes, I'm giving you your flowers. Um, I saw the way you navigated <laughs> your opportunity very well. Yeah, yeah. And you went into a producing mindset mm. and one of the biggest franchises in the world. And I thought that was such a brave thing to do, but also a um, very wise thing to do because you're educating yourself not yeah, only yeah, in yeah. front of the camera, but behind. behind yeah. So I do what Tish always does is, JB, can I have a phone call? <laughs> and how do you do this? 
and you explained to me, you mm -hmm. said, Tish, it's, it's important to know um, about intellectual property. Mm -hmm. It's important to know the market that you're in, yeah. study the market that you're in and option things. Mm -hmm. You know, you told me that and Michael B. Jordan told me that when yeah. I was on Black Panther mm -hmm. and you said, find a name. You said, find a name, any name mm -hmm. and get it trademarked. Yeah. Trademarking is expensive, kids. Yeah, yeah, that paperwork is real. We're adults now. <laughs> Of trademarking, you know what I mean? Trademarking is expensive. Yeah, it is, but um, got to do it. But I did it. Yeah. And then it was about waiting for the opportunity to present itself. Mm. So then when I got that advice from you, mm. I moved on to just talking to more people who, who were doing it. Mm. I spoke to Datari. That's Datari uh, Turner. The Datari Turner. Producer. Yes, yeah. excellent producer. He yeah. also works with Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. And I sat down with him and I said, Brother, how do you do this? Mm. And he told me the best way to start is to attach yourself to your projects. Yeah. And Silent Twins came and I knew about it prior. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I would like to be a producer, an executive producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at the time, I didn't know what I was talking about. Right, right, but right. I, but I knew. Figure it out. But I knew I had to figure it out. Mm. I knew that I had to take a step into the water mm. um, and just get in. So as I started that process of discovering the ways in which I was going to play this character alongside Tamara Lawrence, who plays Jennifer Gibbons, my twin. It was about getting into the room with the director, working on the script, working on the, on the edits. And you're involved in casting, that process in a yeah. way that you hadn't experienced before. Never. Actor for Hire is quite different. Yeah. And you start producing also. So that opened my world in a new way. Yeah. So I started to, I started to just enjoy the process of creativity mm on screen and behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I got to see something from start to finish mm. right before my eyes, and I'm really proud of it. Had you been able to push and lift? <gasps> right as now. Right as now. You produced Breaking also, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, came on to Breaking and produced So as how well. do you juggle such a, a great portrayal of a character? Um, you make your sister your assistant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You make your sister your assistant. Okay. And your sis schedules things based on what she knows of you. Yeah. By DNA. Okay. And also at the same time, all the industry stuff. Okay. So the balance is real right yeah. now. You know, we always talk about that when we reconnect. Is yeah. You now we're moving at a pace where we know what we were aiming for coming yeah. up, but we didn't know how it was actually going to go. Yeah. When you navigate it, you can only hit the ground running. Yeah. And I guess that's the balance for me. I love to produce. I love to get involved in development. Yeah. I used to be on the set of Star Wars. And I'll just be sitting there, you know, in between takes. Yeah. And all the producers, like, there'd be a convoy of cars that would just come in. You know how it goes down. <laughs> They'd bring out the convoy of cars that would you just come out. You think you're getting fired or something? I thought I was getting fired <laughs> or something. Then there's a tent in the distance, and all the producers will go into the tent. Mm. And while they're in there, they're discussing stuff like, what color should the lightsaber be? Mm. You know, they're discussing like some big, you know, story. They're trying to get through story. Mm. And I was really inspired by it. I was like, nah, man, this is. They are involved in the conversations that are going to change cinematic history. Yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. You know, and you know, you were growing up thinking that acting was only it, and now you're in a position where you're kind of like, actually, I have a creative perspective and I yeah. would love to share that with the audience. Yeah. The only way to do it is get involved in the development of my own projects. Yeah. So in connecting with you guys and seeing that you guys are doing that and yeah. several different projects you've been bringing out, and I know yeah. you've got a good several in development as well. Yeah. It's it's exciting. Raider. Take me back to Star Wars mm. because we couldn't have seen ourselves in the roles that we see ourselves now, mm. especially in the magnitude of a franchise, until we saw you. Mm. How has that been to play such a significant role, but one that has inspired a generation? I, I saw you. I, I, I done like a surprise yeah, up at the yeah. Movie and I was there. And you were there. I was yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I know you probably don't think it, and it's probably best that you don't because it keeps mm. you in the mind of an artist. Mm -hmm. But you were part of something that was so significant mm. and so, so inspirational for all of us. Mm. I mean, definitely, you know, the human beings were always going to adapt to opportunities, misfortunes, whatever, you know, the circumstance that we go through. Yeah. But I think Star Wars was just... It was a process, you know, even getting the role, you know, a good nine months audition process. And, you yeah. know, you know how that goes, um, yeah. especially with Disney in, in, yeah. in terms of them being vigorous and finding the right person. Yeah. Um, and going through that was, was new to me. Um, yeah. You know, they're like 
third callback, fourth callback, fifth callback. Yeah. And I'm going home. I'm going back to my mum because at the time I was still staying with mum and dad. Yeah. I'm going back home to the flat. Um, and I'm stressing during this nine months because I'm like, is my life going to change or not? Yeah. Because that's the weird thing about it is that yeah. the role doesn't only represent a great opportunity as an artist, yeah. but it represents a potential change in your life yeah. that could or couldn't happen yeah. based on what you do in those audition rooms. And that pressure for me was like, right, man, this is what they was talking about on season four of Entourage. <laughs> this, yeah, this, is, this is the real deal. This is the stuff that we could only dream about and, 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 and speak about. Yeah. But to go through that process and go through the process of believing in my talent, yeah. JJ Abrams being a, a big a big confidence, somebody that was supporting me through that process hardcore, was something that changed me for sure, but in, in, in good ways, you know, yeah. re resilient to certain things, uh, understand different perspectives. Yeah. And then through, as I said, misfortunes and, and, and fortunes, I'm able to ad advise and give my perspective and then yeah. people take from it what, you know, what they will. Yeah. But it was long, Tish, it yeah. was long. And obviously, you know, you have to stay quiet about it. Yeah. Um, or the secret. Yeah, and I couldn't tell my mum and dad. So you're going yeah. back every day. You're going, you're going to this place where you're taking a jug of water, gym wear. Yeah. And my, my dad was like, John, where are you going? <laughs> said, dad, I'm just, you know, I'm working on something. Just working. I'm, I'm, I'm out. He's like, okay, cool. Okay, yeah. right. He didn't ask until the day I got the role. Yeah. Um, and, and I came back home and, and let him know that I got the role. And he was like, all these months, this is what you were yeah. kind of going through. So I guess it changes you in just being adaptable. Yeah. Um, to this different circumstance that we found ourselves in. And I love how you can go from playing such a beautiful character, mm -hmm. really funny, really cool mm -hmm. character such as Finn, mm -hmm. to your representation yeah. of that amazing part in Small Axe. Oh yeah, I want to tap into that. Small Axe was you mad. Golden Globe winner. God, it's good. <laughs> God, it's good. That was nuts. What was that like? That was nuts. What Small was the process for that? First of all, I wanted to work with Steve McQueen. Yes a phenomenal director. So I knew that this was going to be something that attracts a lot of talking points, uh, the yeah. creme de la creme of whatever, yeah. you know, uh, a critic is going to be watching this to see, yeah. see what Steve McQueen is trying to create. But I love the story. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that it was about a guy who was trying to change essentially an industry and organization from the inside out. Movies, actors, we're here to do character studies sometimes, different yeah. perspectives. We should never be playing just charismatic versions of ourselves. Mm. So going into Leroy, there was a challenge there as an actor. There was working with Steve McQueen. And at the same time, there was a collaboration of such amazing actors around set. So I was, yeah. nah, I was excited. And I heard you had your episode as well. Come I was on. like, come on. Come I on. said the Black Brit Renaissance. Steve McQueen. Yeah. Come I'm like, let me, let me get this, let me get this, you know. So what was it like? <laughs> now let me get Listen. that. Let me get them interviews where it has to be intricate about the character. And when you yeah. get to actually do the work, like Tish, man, I don't want to play any character. Yeah where I have to, it's too much of me. Mm. I forget all of that. I have to transcend this yeah. and show people perspective. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing that, I don't feel like I'm acting. Like, mm -hmm. acting ain't lying. Mm. You know what I mean? Stop, I'm out there with no backup. With what you've achieved so far, what's the next level? And I know you asked me that too. And I, I guess my answer for that would be, like, I just want to transform. I'm yeah. trying to be on my Tilda Swinton. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. I want to be on my Viola, you know oh. what I mean? So it's kind of like what you've started because I, breaking is that. Yeah, man. Leroy is that, that. Yeah, it does. You know, in a way, Finn is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finn is, yeah, is yeah. so, oh, like, so far from who you are. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what's fun about it. Attack the block. Moses, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there are so many different characters that are so well-rounded mm -hmm. in your, in your catalogue. Mm -hmm. I think next it's, it's, it's exploring that more. Yeah. It's, it's versatility. I say versatility is an like actor that. spending money, man. You, you can choose as much characters as you like as long yeah. as you have the ability to transform into them. Yeah. So after The Woman King, after Break Him, yeah. you know, Femi's like, yeah, what's next, man? What will we do yeah. next? They clone Tyrone came, in which I nice. play four to five different characters. Ooh, um, don't spoil it for me now. I mean, they clone Tyrone. <laughs> so, you know. I saw that. It, it looks like you got some like um, old dirty. You know. I got a whole bunch of prosthetics and wow. thrills and there's like d different ways of just transforming. Working with Jamie Foxx, I was like, you know what? Yeah, this is it. This is just discovering different characters and truly showing the audience that I'm an actor who loves my job and loves to commit to the process of transforming yeah. into those characters as well. Hope niggas don't get fucked up right now. So talk to me about the stunts for yeah. Black Panther, like what, what the process was, mm -hmm. 
the training, I know it was vigorous. Mm-hmm. I mean, they put you in that suit, you was doing some acrobatics, <laughs> fighting, and I know you, you had some motorbikes, there's this whole bunch going on, some yeah. rolling on the floor. And all that. Talk to me about that process. How, <laughs> how was that for you? Well, with all films um, of this magnitude, it's, a, it's important to do, you know, that four-week process mm-hmm. of training, rehearsals, stunts. So the first thing we had to do first, though, was learn how to swim. <laughs> so I saw Lupita's training video as yeah, well. Yeah, so Jeez. her one's hardcore. Um, yeah, yeah. Mine, is not, mine is not as uh, hardcore. <laughs> she <laughs> but, said, what is the scene? Like, what <laughs> <laughs> but Ryan called me and he said, um, I Tish, you know how to swim? I was like, what do you need me to get in a waterfall? <laughs> 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 but, you know, the world of Talukan. Yeah. So I had to learn with the team in Stratford in London. Shouts out London. Um, the, the Olympic team there. That's, had... that's budget. No, don't, say that. <laughs> don't say that casually. You know who I train with who's <laughs> swimming? Danielle, you know, <laughs> from HR. That's like, you know, Olympic team. That's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So they get an Olympic team to train you guys. Yes, for people who train Super Olympians. Big, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my task was just getting from one end to the pool to the next. And if I can do that, I'm solid. Yeah, good. So I got there and I think I thought, I got this, like one end to the pool, one end of the pool to the next. And then I came to Atlanta and they're like, we have a free diving class. And I'm like, free and who? To free what? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to all get into the to this huge, like, this tank is pretty much from hair from the floor to the ceiling so we had to all learn how to free dive and I successfully learned how to do that hold my breath for like two minutes go down Yeesh. um stay down there yeah he made me do my Wakanda forever and then you go back up <laughs> my free diving instructor uh, made me do that how many times you don't have to do that a few <laughs> yeah. I said this is a way to identify someone who's part of the Black Panther cast you know, right here, there's gonna be a, they're gonna be lighter because the friction between you guys have to do that like a million times throughout the press tour. <laughs> you guys are doing that constantly. You know so what? even in the water, they get you to do it. You know what? It's Chadwick. Chadwick is the reason why oh, we do that. Ancient Egypt, and it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's so brilliant and so smart, and he left us with 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 that. He, he's so that's vigorous training. He's in heaven, like you're gonna do that yeah, all the yeah. time. Tell me about Woman King. Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> there was loads of stunts in that. <laughs> For you. Was I involved? <laughs> Viola, uh, Sheila Atim, Lashana them. Lynch, Tuso and Bedu, like they went through like six months of training. Um, they transformed their body. When I was on set, Lashana Lynch walked past me, her back had a back. <laughs> she was just there, like, <clears throat> has completely transformed her body. That's amazing. And essentially, I just needed to learn how to move well in a rope. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, you did it very well. It, it, yeah, it went you did very, it very, very well. Very, very well. You did it good, you know. They were suggesting, you know, you know, because you, you, you're showing chest. Yeah. You want to have six pack. I said, what king is gonna have oh, six pack? You said, oh yeah. Thirteen wives. Why would I be having six pack? <laughs> no, just give it's me soft. It's the wives for me. Yeah, just give me soft and you know, nice little press up before then, <laughs> and that's all I did. But that was obviously a line to the character. But before, you know, the other stuff that I've done before, I've, I've, you know, had to do training or Star Wars. There's a lot of training yeah. and dieting and. This was relaxed to the point where, <laughs> I don't lie, the cast members were there in the sun, you know, because they had to perform and dance to King Gezo in a movie and they're yeah. in the sun. Viola's bleeding from her leg and foot. Um, and I'm just there in the scene and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad sometimes. I'm like, sorry, you know, as you were, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a process and it was inspiring, you know, like, yeah. it really is inspiring to see women being pushed, especially black women being pushed because of this unique history that we all know about, yeah. that we speak about. Yeah. That our sisters and mothers communicate to us about. Yeah. It's it's lovely to see um, it moving forward in a way in which you know those people now start to get leading roles and opportunities both in front of the camera and and behind the camera. Yeah, and, you it's know, about time. You're a part of that. I am. Wow. Yeah. It's a big, massive deal. I almost feel like the thing was ordained. In yeah, a sense. and I'm proud that it's um it's shutting down so much of those those perceptions and those yeah. Assumptions that we we could never break box yeah. office and all of these things and yeah. and we just tell the good stories. We stay focused on what we need to do and mm-hmm. it impacts the people and it does the numbers and it's it's inspiring. I loved Woman King so much. Oh, thank you. I walked yeah. away from that movie extremely yeah. inspired. Yeah, Gina um, done a thing on it. 
you guys are doing a sequel, right? I don't know. Really? I don't know. If you they have are. to do a sequel. I don't know. No, it would be good if they can continue that story. Hit me they... up. No, what? You would... Wakanda and a Woman King mashup? Are you crazy? A There's a merge there somewhere. It's gonna be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and we got two ideas from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>